Asia Irving's diving efforts pay off against Perry Hall. Franklin's Andreas Price levitates for this catch against McDonough. Perry Hall's Kara Dietrich with the golden goal, Darius Sample uses every inch of the end zone. All coming up next on BCPX 14. Welcome back to another action-packed episode of BCPS Sports Scene. We're going to dive right into some winter sports updates from around the county. Up first, we visit the Sparrows Point Wrestling Squad, who have been off to a great start this season, with many athletes hoping to make a run in states. Perennially one of the top wrestling teams in the county, Sparrows Point is heading in stride as the season wears on. Expectations are sky high. I mean, we, we're, we're undefeated up to this point. Uh, just we weren't wrestling to the level that we need to be wrestling to, to reach our end of the season goals. Um, so it's, it's just a daily battle of continuing to work hard, continuing to get better, um, and realize what our goals are. If we're going to achieve them, we need to get better every single day. We started talking together as a team, and we built a confidence over our last dual meet tournament. We beat us, I think it was a six or seven time state champion team, Damascus. We beat them, and we beat another tough opponent, South Carroll. And we kind of got our confidence back, and we're working be better as a team. The team benefits from a strong pipeline of talent through the Area Rec program. Well, I, I've been seeing a lot more people joining the team, and I've been seeing more and better kids come in, and I, I feel like we just improved over, over the years. We have, we have a good turnout. I think we got around 50 kids, 40 kids, so we have a lot of kids on our team, and. You know, just our coaches really, you know, it, they, they turned this program into something serious. We, we were at a high level, I think, before we started the rec, um, but the rec has allowed us to go to that next level. We were teaching kids in ninth grade how to wrestle, whereas now we're getting kids in ninth grade who already know how to wrestle and just elevating them to the next level. It's a special community down here in, in, in Sparrows Point. If you come, if you ever been here for a home match, we have the best, I think, home field advantage in the county. It's, it's a small gym, it's intense, it's loud. Uh, we just have a great community support. It's awesome to be a part of. Despite the team's success, the ultimate goal has been elusive. These seniors have been to three straight state finals and lost. Um, so they come in here with a common goal of uh, trying to get over the hump this year. For the past three years, I've seen us go to states, and uh, for the past three years, we, we've come up a little short, and uh, you know, we. We've grown a lot. I think this is our best team we've had in a long time, and we have the most potential this year, and we want to make it happen. Good luck to the team as they finish out the regular season. Sticking with wrestling, Parkville High wrestling coach Desi McNellis recently achieved a major milestone. Parkville wrestling coach Desi McNellis reached a milestone recently, getting the 500th win of his coaching career. It was a great experience to be there while he got his 500 win. It was great to be a part of it because he's, is, to, get a, to get 500 wins is ridiculous. That means he's been doing this for a very long time. He's been winning for a very long time. He's just a great coach all around. 500 wins, you have to do that for like a while. And to like get 500 wins like based off teams, that's pretty good because you know that he helped all those people get them, get them matches to get one. So like it shows that he's actually a pretty good coach. Well, the, reaching the 500, was you know obviously very special, it's, um, but reaching the 501 was as as special for me because that top guy Pritzker, first time I beat guy <laughs> ever. That 500 and first win makes McNellis the winningest coach in Baltimore County wrestling. After stints at St. Paul's, Delaney, and Pikesville, it is now the young wrestlers at Parkville that benefit from his knowledge. He's been doing this for a very long time. He still seems very eager to teach everybody new moves, willing to help everybody out and help their progression in wrestling. Um, he's very personable. He's in our wrestling group chats with us. He really wants to help us out. Last year when I started here, I had only four kids from the year before, I had brand new kids. Um, and they bought into the program. And, you know, we talk about being a family. And, you know, they, they work hard together and they, they think more about the team than themselves and you know they're they're working really hard and that's that's all I can ask. It's a tremendous achievement you know there's not many who have have done that it shows that you can adapt to the, the, the new generation you can adapt to what's going on and that you're that you're committed 
and he's always produced top tier guys. He's a he focuses on fundamentals. He's a great guy to to be around. I love always loved wrestling, and you know it's a science to it. And, um, and I enjoy teaching kids and seeing them pick it up and progress and and get really good. Congratulations, Coach. What an amazing accomplishment and an exciting time for Parkville Wrestling. Up next, we head over to Lock Raven High to check in on the girls' basketball team. With a little less than half of the regular season left, the Lady Raiders are looking to finish the season out strong. Not known for their basketball program, the Lock Raven girls' team is putting together a nice season. Over the years, it's got more, more serious because our potential has grown for sure. So we take practices more seriously, games more seriously, and we want to win. We've just been putting in more work this season than we have in previous years. We have more people coming to summer workouts, um, and I feel like that's helped us with our chemistry. We're more of a, a tightly bonded team than we have been in the past, so that's helped us. I feel like now we have all the girls that really want to be a part of this program, and we're such a close-knit, strong family, and we always are there to support each other, and we're always picking each other up, and everyone is hustling, and everyone is doing their job and playing good. Our team is mostly built around soccer, softball, volleyball, um, lacrosse players, and they actually come to the basketball court and they get it done. None of my players, this is their first sport. So when they get in here, they get at the teams. Despite closing in on double-digit wins midway through the season, the team knows there is room for improvement. We still need to play all four quarters of basketball. Normally we slack off in the first half and then we get better as the, the other quarters follow through. So I think a big goal for us would be playing all four quarters of basketball. I just want to play well as a team together um, and win the tough games that matter. Um, winning against like the smaller schools who aren't as experienced, yeah, that's great to win, but um, I just want the team to play well in our games. Um, to win the tough games is what I want. Um, we're a defensive ball club. Our goal is to hold each team we play to under 40 points. If we can hold teams under 40 points, we have a real strong chance of winning. The girls are doing their part to raise the profile of Lock Raven's athletic program. Yeah, I think it's really good for our school that our sports teams are doing really well. Like lacrosse, they did a great job last year. Softball, football, basketball. Boys basketball is eight and, um, eight and one, I think. And that think that just brings the school together when everyone can come out and support one another. This group, they, they've been together for the last four years, our three, our three leaders. And right now in the season, we're getting through with their leadership, but we, it's, it's a lot of room for improvement. I mean, we're winning games, but we're not where we want to be at just yet. But we're getting there. Sticking with the Raiders, let's see what the boys basketball team is up to. The Lock Raven boys basketball team came into the season hoping to improve from last year's 10 and 10 team. With wins over Patterson and Coppin Academy, the Raiders sights aimed higher. On November 15th when we got in here, it was a, a high level of energy, a high competitiveness that we had going on. And I think that kind of just fueled the run that we got on as soon as the season started. So far, I think we've really tried to embody the idea of being a team that really tries to play hard on the court, play for each other, play as a family, and just try to um, really show that, show our passion on the court. And so far, that's translated into a lot of good wins, uh, a lot of good team play. I think it's been a lot of growth as far as um, we've had a lot of experiences, you know, a year worth of development. Um, the culture's been instilled uh, within our program. I think uh, we have a certain expectation. Uh, all the kids expect to be better than what we were last year, better than what we were two years ago. And um, I think that's kind of become contagious through the program. The players credit second year head coach Brandon Thomas with creating a culture of accountability. Lock Raven hasn't really had the best rep basketball wise. So um, with coach Brandon coming in, you know, last year he, he really made it his priority to try to change this program around and really try to make it as make it as, as good as it could be, you know. When Coach Brandon came, I think all the pieces kind of clicked and we just we just kept working hard, kept trying to get better, and I think now all the hard work is finally starting to pay off. But for Coach Thomas, the players deserve the credit for buying in and committing to each other. 
I, I tell them all the time that games are won in practice, you know, and it's up to us to push each other in practice to make each other better. That way the game situations don't seem foreign, they feel natural, um, and our best competition should happen in practice, not game day. Like, there's really no limit to how good we could be, and we just want to go out and just show everybody what we could really do. And we don't look down, like, we're not, we're expecting to beat everybody we play. What's driving us now is all the little things, and, and that's what we're trying to drive home, the brotherhood, the, um, you know, holding each other accountable grades, and we're just finding not only success on the court, we're finding success in the classroom, and the culture that's here, is, it, it's, it's been amazing. I'm just happy to be a part of it and happy to drive that home with the kids every year. Now let's see those Raiders in action as they host Newtown in what should be a tough matchup. The Lock Raven Raider boys basketball team got a chance to see how they measured up as they played host to Newtown. The Titans took control early in the contest, dominating on the boards. Andrew Mills here for the tip-in. Then, Martez Robinson with the steal, and he finds Stefan Marcano for the layup as the Titans went up 10-2. But, Lock Raven went on an 11-2 run to take their only lead of the game at 13-12. But the Titans began to pull away again as the first quarter drew to a close, Tuan Carter with the three. And then, Mercano driving the baseline for a bucket, putting the Titans up by six at the end of one. Second quarter, Kyrie Johnson drives the lane for a bucket. But Sean Powell answered for the Raiders. Then, Andrew Mills finds the range for three. And Johnson feeds Cameron Blackman Bush underneath for a pair as the Titans led by 12 at the half. In the third, Raider Christian Johnson crashes the boards for two. But Martez Robinson works inside for the scoop and score. Then, Alonzo Martin knocks down a three from the corner. Stefan Mercano hits a pair of threes on the way to 21 points on the night, as Newtown stretches lead to 15. The Titans continue to pull away from the Raiders on the way to an 83-60 win. That's all for today's show. Keep an eye out for our next episode. And as always, thanks for watching and make sure to follow us on Twitter at BCPS Sports Scene for ongoing updates.